Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Everything's been weird. I'm sure it's been weird for you. It's been weird for me. It's been weird for all of us. These are strange times and all we can do is just keep on keeping on. And if you're lucky enough to be well, which we are, count your blessings. Okay, first thing on the agenda is if you are subscribed, wonderful. If you have not subscribed yet, please do. And when you do, please click on the notification bell so that you will be notified every time we put up a new video on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, if you go to our YouTube homepage, in other words, you type in Pacific Mike and you go to that channel page there's all the stuff there. There's the three engines that we have on display. And then there's a, a, a row of words across there. I'm putting more words in. There will be more words. Um, it, you click on the one that says videos, and all of our videos will be displayed below. We have over 100 of them up now. So quite often the question you have to ask has already been answered. Or maybe you'll be able to frame it a little better if you look at the video too. I certainly don't mind the comments. I love the comments. I've been enjoying them. Okay. Other than that, um, yes, we're very far behind. We're getting caught up. Uh, we're going to be back to work on the project bike soon. At the moment, I'm working on my road bike because after I got it running, all the things that I did not give attention to are screaming for it. So today what we're going to do is we're going to install a new throw out bearing and put it back together. So let's get on with it. The throw out bearing, um, let's see, the clip broke and the, and the slinger slung. I mean, all of this stuff looked pretty, pretty weak, pretty bad. So what I did was I finally ordered a whole new kit this is the late style throw out bearing. My preference is usually on the old style, but on the later transmissions with the later kicker gears and the later kicker covers and so on, you don't get to use one of these early style throw out bearings, which I really love. They never go, they never wear out. They go bad, they make noise, they're worn out, they're no good, and they're still working just fine. But we have the modern setup, and that's what we're going to put in. So I got a whole new push rod and bearing, and here is the slinger. So the way this assembles, the slinger goes on there. And then we put one of these, you can call it a thrust washer, or you can call it a bearing race. And there's a little brass bushing goes in the middle. And here is the, oh, I forgot what you call it. It's not a radial bearing. It's a, uh, sorry, can't remember. Someone will write in and tell me, I'm sure. So once that's all in place, then the last thrust washer slash bearing race is in place. Okay, now we'll put the uh, little uh, E-clip on it that holds it in place. <laughs> What's really fun here is putting that little E-clip in place. <laughs> it hit me in the beard. It hit me in the beard. But that's all right. You know, I'm going to tell you the truth. I have extra ones of those clips or I wouldn't have risked letting that one fly. It really did, too. Okay. Now, I can't help it when I put on a snap ring or an E-clip or any of these odd little things. 
I always want to put the machined flat surface out so it can catch and hold on better. Maybe we'll try this little pair of pliers. And it's on. Wait a minute, I didn't want to say it's on. And there it is. All right, it is on there. It is attached very well. So what I'm going to do is put it on the bike and then I'll come back and we'll assemble the kicker cover. So let me take my, my leash here and I'll walk over to the bike. and install the entire assembly. Now this is the slinger that slings oil around in here so this bearing stays oiled. Okay now going back to my uh, I really am enjoying this chair to work in. You know if I do this right <laughs> Alright, the next thing is in the kit came a new finger for operating the throwout bearing. Now, if you look at these, I have different fingers from different year models and they're different widths and sometimes you have to do a little fancy trick to interchange some of this stuff. So I've tried all the stuff, come up with the combination. I actually put a washer in here that raises this arm up, this clutch arm. That's something you may or may not need. It's something I needed to do on my six speed. I was limited for space. So not everybody's going to need the same stuff. So if I put that finger inside the kicker cover, And I put this down so that the finger goes all the way back against it in here. And the arm is in the back position. Then everything comes out in the right place. So that certainly entertained me. Now what I'm going to do is put an E-clip on that shaft. And I just ran off my... Uh, thing down below there. Okay. Now if I do this just right. Which I didn't. But if I do, I can get that clip on there and be done with it in no time. And it's on all the way. Funny thing is, as much as I hate to admit it, if that clip comes off of there, nothing will happen. The only thing will happen is that clip came off of there. Because when you have this thing hooked up and the cable is in here, this thing really isn't going to lift up. It's going to stay in place. Okay, next thing to be aware of, I had the Kickstarter apart. That is, I had this shaft out of here with this gear on it. 
And you have to be careful that you index this gear properly. Uh, it has to go, this pin has to go against the stop in the transmission case. So this has to be indexed properly. You do it a couple times and you'll know. The spring mounts right there and this has to be over here. So what we're going to do now is take it over and install it. And in my old age, I must say, I really prefer to do these things sitting down. So I'm going to get over here. I'm going to bring my chair over and we'll put this thing on. Should not take very long. Now I've got to push the this arm in between the starter and the top of the transmission. And we see that in there. It's got to go right in there. So all of this stuff has to be held in place properly as I install it. Now, if you notice right there where the, the, uh, the starter is hooked up and there's a cable on it and the whole works, all of that needs to clear this arm. The other thing is this should never be attempted with the battery connected. Never be attempted with the battery connected. I like that. My point being you will really arc something in there and chances are you can damage something including yourself. Okay, so if I had my kicker arm on here, I could use it or a 5 ace wrench will do the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on now. Again, that arm has to go in there. And we have to move that gear over. You know what? This should be done with this behind that kickstart gear. There we go. Okay. And to quote myself, there it is. We'll get a couple of these nuts on there. That is, these chrome nuts, which is what I usually put on these. I put on chrome nuts and I use AN washers because they're so thin and small. I think it looks real attractive this way. And AN is what they call these washers. And the reason they are called AN washers, I assume they were for the military because AN stands for Army Navy. All right. And notice that there is no washer and nut here. I'm putting a bolt in there. And the reason for that is it had to clear an exhaust system I had on here. Okay, I can put the rest of them on. I don't think anyone needs to watch me do that. But if I look in there, I can see that my clutch arm here has plenty of movement. Can you show that, Mike? Maybe you can even see the cable back in there if I light it up well. Okay, and I will hook that on there after I get all the nuts put onto the cover here. So there it is. I think we showed how to install the throwout bearing and put that kicker cover back on. Um, on the other side, the uh, adjusting screw for the center of the clutch is backed off to allow for all this to be installed. Now, when this is all done, I will go, I will hook up the cable and I will go over there and screw in that adjustment screw, just like we showed in the clutch adjusting in the past. 
we've showed a lot of clutch work, so I thought I wouldn't go to the trouble to show that since we're doing this. So there it is. There you have it. I hope somebody learned something, and we'll get it done here pretty quick and get on to the next thing. Again, I want to tell you we're going to be back on the project bike very soon, the Flathead 80, and we'll catch up. But until then, see you out on the road.